Welcome and thank you for joining our third session no, sa atong Gender and Development uh, webinar series. So we are down sa atong session three, quarantine or quarantined, no, updates on gender-based violence amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Hello. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Kate. Uh, Good morning, everyone. My respect to our schools division superintendent, Ma'am Aluna Oy, who is actually celebrating her birthday today as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the support and happy birthday, Ma'am. And then to our chief, uh, Sir Julie Oy, thank you also for supporting us. And then to our EPS, uh, Sir Boy Sir, who is also in charge of the GAD of the division office, Sir. Good morning to our uh, partner, DUSCST, my respect as well to Dr. Idito Bisumili, the OIC president of Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology, and to the God Center director, Dr. Geraldine Sacro, ma'am, and of course to the focal, God focal persons, Professor Mary Phil M. M. Bauyot and Mr. Junel Villegas. Sir, good morning. Um, today's webinar will focus much on the legal aspects of the gender and development. There are actually concerns as well on the violence committed against women and children and it would also be better to discuss this to orient as well our teaching and non-teaching personnel of what's happening probably with uh, everyone during this pandemic. And with this God uh, activity, we intend, of course, that we will be able to advocate the rights of everyone, especially with women and children, and those who are actually uh, vulnerable to all forms of violence. Uh, I hope you will have a good time for this uh, webinar, and I look forward to uh, being with you at, to the end of this uh, webinar series. Once again, good morning, and thank you for participating. Ayan. So thank you, Doc Leo, and happy birthday, Ma'am Alona. Yay! <laughs> All right. At this juncture, we will hear a message from the Chief of the School Governance and Operation Division, Mr. Jory S. Wei. Ayan, so we do apologize po for the technical difficulties that I know we're experiencing technical glitches. Um, uh, maybe we can uh, play back the message of Sir Julia, our SGOD chief. So without further ado, no, moving right along, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker. Ayan, she is a doctor of philosophy in criminal justice education, a registered criminologist and licensed professional teacher. She is also a member of the Gender and Development Speaker Bureau specializing on legal perspectives. And also, she is the director of the Gender and Development Center of the Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Geraldine Himilian Sacro. Okay, uh, hello, good morning. Thank you for that warm introduction, Mom Keith. No? Uh, again, good morning to our online viewers out there, to my colleagues in the DOSCSD God Center, Professor Mary Phil Baoyot and Janelle Villegas, as well with our staff, and of course to my all-time partner in crime, either, rather, uh, partner in uh, extension, Dr. Ray Rizil Sharot. Okay? Before we go further with our talks today, uh, we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to all the deep ed personnel spearheaded by assistant school division superintendent uh, miss aluna si Uy, the birthday celebrant for bracing this activity and responding our advocacy via online platform again this activity is brought to us by the DOCST god center and the deep ed Sidamati. 
uh, we are introducing uh, God webinar series. So let me share with you my uh, screen. This uh, webinar series is brought to us by the DOCST God Center and the Deep City of Mati. This activity aims to promote knowledge sharing on gender inclusivity in times of COVID-19 and to continue strengthening the advocacy of women and other gender. So guys, uh, this is episode three and my title, uh, the title of my talk is Quarantine or Quarantine Updates on Gender-Based Violence Amidst the COVID-19 Pandemic. So my point of discussion are, this, are the following. We're going to discuss further what is God's basic concept, defining gender-based violence, COVID-19 and the quarantine measures, a status of gender-based violence before, during, after COVID-19, how the how to address gender-based violence in educational institution or in general, and gender-based violence initiatives of various government institutions. So again, uh, I think we need to review the uh, God concept, no? it was being discussed sa ito ang episode 1 under sa talk ni uh, Janelle Villegas. But then again, uh, for us to fully understand the existence of gender-based violence, it is important for us to differentiate the sex and gender or what we call as the God concept. Again, because sex and gender is understanding the gender relations and the power dynamics that we have now in our society. And it's also because uh, it explains the individual access, distribution of resources, the ability to make decisions, and the way women and men, boys, girls are affected with political processes and social development. So, at least I review. So, we have, we, uh, we have here the distinction between sex versus uh, gender. Of course, as being said, that sex is given at birth. So, given at birth, we have the male and the female. Uh, it is also said that this is congenital and it is biological. It is permanent, meaning uh, uh, it is constant in different countries and constant in different times. No, um, Meaning, kung matutag US, matutag Mexico, doon lang dito ang ginabanggit sa sex. It is male or female. Or if we're going to go back in our primitive days, kung mag ta, or mo ano ta mo ato ta ang future uh, permanent na ginang male o um, female and it leaves as a question what you were born with so which means that it explains the sex characteristics like uh, what are the sex characteristics if you are a man or if you are a male of course it is expected that we have uh, you have semen or you have testicles and what if kung babae ka female ka of course it is expected when we say gender uh, sex characteristics, you have a monthly period, no? you have breasts, you are a child mirror. So those are um, questions that would uh, uh, intake us what you were born with, uh, kung sa sex ang atong tanawan na perspective. No? Next is, we have of course uh, gender. Gender is culturally and socially dictated. When we say dictated, it is uh, uh, the, way we, the way we act like uh, masculinity or femininity no it is also talks about variable it differs in society and it differs time and it leaves question guys of what happened afterwards this is due to social or cultural conditioning so men should be construct worker breadwinner or dapat ang lalaki dapat dong ing anika so it is the way uh, what happened afterwards sa pag Pagkatao na nato. Okay? So those are the difference of the two. Um, uh, we have here still a slide that would uh, explain further our rules na nakita nato sa ang society. So we have here photos, guys. Yan. Vesta. So kung makadungog taog Vesta, no? what are the rules, gender rules na to? Karun nga, nag-exist sa ang society. So kung may Vesta, most likely, ang mga babae ang nag-prepare sa household chores, no? decoration, nag-hugas, nag and most likely, ang mga lalaki nag-prepare sa asa ang, asa ang kung may litsyon, sila ang nag-litsyon, kung asa ang mga masculinity na work, uh, moto ang mga trabaho sa lalaki. No? Kung kadungo ko taan 
criminology, I am a criminologist, no? Uh, most likely, sa ato ang, sa ato ang mga ginikanan, may ingon na sila, og, ayo og enroll kay pang lalaki na siya, no? Those are gender rules, no? It is not actually uh, written in our law na gender, maunay dapat ang actuations ng gender, no? It is not because it is actually indoctrinated in us, in our society, in our family, which is, uh, nadiha karon ang problema because the gender characterization, guys, ito. The problem is, the gender characterization dictates or influences what the woman or a man should do and what the woman or a man can be. It therefore dictates or influences men's and women's development and that of our society. So listen, siya, kanya naman, gidiktahan na magutang mo, hindi dapat ang ato i-actions based ato ang gender. Okay? So another explanation is this uh, three. No? Kining kahoy, it represents our society. Our society. No? So yung ano yung nahitabok ka ron? So their root is represent the gender belief. So mga pagtuo na ito nga, maulang ni ang kaya sa babae because again, mong manguna ang gi-indoctrinal sa ito ang ginikanan. No? The ideas, the system, the processes, the condition, or the situation that blocks. No? Muna man na, nag-root naman na sa ito ang, ang society, sa ito ang culture nga. Mauni dapat ang himuon sa babae, mauni dapat ang himuon sa lalaki, which is that is gender characterization. And it struggle with our our trunk. Ini. So, on sa man yung trunk, it represents actually the the process of socialization na nadiha ang sulahan na nadiha ang ato ang family no kay na may giindoctrinar diri sa root sa to ang mga mali nga mga pagtuo sumudagan na siya sa trunk ya pagabot nato sa leaves actually it is the opportunity or accessibility that only few women are in the political in the social that can avail so dili tanan kay kuno kung dagan ang leaves mas dagan ang opportunity sa lalaki so dili Ang isa ka society, ang isa ka fruit, uh, isa ka uh, kahoy, dili na siya makabear o dagang fruit, wala development because uh, na ay problema sa ito ang root of our gender belief. No? So that is why we have gender and development. Mura gina ang mutubag. Okay? Now, there, we have here also question, guys, why gender matter to us as gender advocates? No? Why gender matter to us? Because... Of course, we are surrounded by gender lure, no? mga traditions ba, that from time to time we are born, maoni dapat, which is in the present, ginagamit siya in our daily conversation. Ang problema mong good is that gender appear to become completely natural, murag natural na lang, which should not be, because it can develop, it can evolve, or mature into gender issues and biases. So kung mauna ka ron ang nasa ato ang mga pagtuo, pag-abot mo good anak ka ron, natay mga ginatawag og gender issues and biases, which is dapat nato na siya maputlon. Okay? So unsa man itong mga gender biases, although gidiscuss na po ni siya sa ato ang episode 1, I think we're going to have a review. So unsa man itong mga gender issues and biases, so naan yung butang di ari, natay gitawag og marginalization. no When we see, again, marginalization, this uh, bias is rooted in the in the akan, uh, economic aspect, like, dili na ito i-hired ang mga babae kay, mga babae kay, uh, taas of maternity privileges, so marginalization na siya. We have here also subordination. It is the biases in the political that means decision will prevail mostly sa mga lalaki. Huh? We have here also a uh, multiple burden. No? It wrote causes of biases. Is uh, This is a sociocultural, no? meaning to say, ang babae ba kay? Child rearing pa siya, mag-parenting pa siya, housework pa siya. Yan. Na siya mga multiple rules from mother to wife. And we have here also gender stereotyping, socio-cultural like dominated by women or men. So katong example na ko ganyan nga, ay mo katong criminology, kung maka dungog o kurso nga criminology, ay na kay pang ano na siya, uh, pang lalaki lang na siya. Those are actually stereotyping. No? And we have also canalization. It, it is it rooted in our language. Sometimes, maya, napuntay sa laan yung canalization, no? Sa ito amis mo, nag-agi. Nag uh, sa ito amis mo, mga boys, nag-ikan ang, ang gender issues, no? It is our behavior, it is our customs, or our, in our tradition. And lastly, guys, we have abuse or violence, no? It is uh, 
the man that has the power control or it is in the theory of power control nga ang lalaki kay siya man ang maskilin so si ang mabuot so most likely iyang abusuhon na siya so naatay karon ginatawag na violence against women so guys naatay ginatawag na existence of gender based violence so kung ato siyang tan-awon with the existence of sex and gender the gender based violence is a byproduct of a, a byproduct of uh, biases of gender kaya taas kaayo prevalence kaayo ang ginatawag na to gender based violence so we have here our definition uh, by, uh, gender based violence involving men uh, violence involving men and women in which female is usually the victim which arises from an equal power relationship between men and women so guys we have i have here also i would like also to share with you my video clip clipping on uh, gender based violence mamarm paki ano ko if uh, okay ang audio what is Okay, so those are some video clippings. Video clippings of gender-based violence, and I hope you understand some basic concept ng what we call as um, gender-based violence. Okay, so we have here again another definition from the UN that gender-based violence is any act of gender-based violence that results in or likely to result in physical, sexual, or psychological harm or suffering to women, including threats of such acts, coercion, or arbitrary deprivation of liberty, whether occurring in public or private life. Okay? So we have here again, guys, types. No, ako lang siyang idagdag. We have here types of uh, GBD. Gender-based violence. We have what we call as private or domestic, no? Yeah, private or, or domestic. Private or domestic yeah, is uh, violence happen within an intimate relationship, no? Although 
domestic kadalasan is bossy is public crime but uh, what we're talking here is kung asa siya pwede mahitabo okay so nata ginatawag na violence si mahitabo within a private life so the measure of the government kasi prevalence naman so prevalence man di ay ang cases of private uh, intimate relationships so ang ginawa ng government di created a law nga mo counter measures siya sa mga violence nga nag-exist within private or domestic. So that is why we have what we call nowadays as BAUSI or RA9262. It is exist, guys, uh, kay tungod taas ang cases of private or domestic violence. So na counter measure again ang government ni Anna mo na namug na ang RA9262. Although a lot of laws na pwede na to i-counter measure within the private or domestic, but then, ang pinakasikat magudihaa is ang, ang atuang ginatawag na BAUSI or 9262. So another one, we have also what we called as uh, public no type of violence that happen in the public views. No? Kanang may experience na to within uh, discrimination or bullying in, in public. So, unsa man ang countermeasure sa government anak karon? So, naatay ginatawag karon lately RA11313 or katong ginatawag na to og anti space spaces act. No? It is a um, again countermeasure of violence nga pwede nahitabo sa ato ang public spaces. So, what about this custody? No, underhand guys, violence in custody may happen if you are under in the custody of someone. Unsa so, may pinaka good example ani kaning mga hitabo na mga violence nga naa sa school school settings or you are in your work environment so ang counter measure nga gihimo sa government ni ani because mataas din ang mga prevalence of cases so karon na atay ginatawag nga uh, RA7877 or the sexual harassment law so diha na nato pwede i counter measure if you are in custody of a person so i again uh, a lot of laws na pwede mo counter measure ni ana but then i am talking only with those common laws na pwede nato i, i match with with this type of violence and we have last we have also what we call as across borders no these are the violence that may happen across border no na immigration immigrate no pinaka good example ni ani na dai violence na pwede may tabo global na pwede immigrate is ang countermeasure is RA9208 or yung tinatawag natin anti-trafficking in person. That is why all laws created because kanang, ang hitabok mong God na mong tayo inahan ka, inahan na title kaning gender-based violence mong muna siya hinungdan yung man. Kanit sila RA9262 and etc. ang akong dimension. Those are countermeasure na pwede mahitabok sa to ang vicinity like private, public, custody or across Orders. Okay? So, there are forms. Although forms was also displaced ato ang video clipping, ato lang i-reiterate because these are also the elements of atong mga uh, laws na ato ang dimensions. So, nata yung ginatawag na physical. O, oh, dali lang ni physical. These are the direct form. No? Commonly, form ng violence is kinong physical. Example, punching, kicking. We have also, guys, sexual, of course, sexual, it is associated with sexual or intimate relationship. No? Or in acts of lasciviousness, those are belong to sexual, rape, marital rape. So, ang dami pong actually example ng sexual uh, violence. And we have here also economic abuse. Of course, this is a deprivation of an intimate partner or na control over the partner's Access of economic resources. Ana, ona to na siya gusto pa trabaho kung kaya gusto ni mo na alang siya sa balay. No, it is actually a, a form of abuse. Uh, Bilong na siya sa economic abuse. Of course, we have emotional or psychological abuse. It is characterized by a person subjecting to, exposing to behavior that may result, of course, in psychological trauma. Okay, so yan. So now, guys, no. Wala pa nabot si COVID actually. Taas na ang mga cases na prevalence cases of gender-based violence, no? Karon, na na si COVID, COVID-19 and the quarantine. Now, since the day that the UN declared COVID-19 or coronavirus as pandemic, many countries are implementing uh, implementing complete lockdown to prevent the spread of virus. And according to the rules of lockdown, either it is ECQ M ECQ, GCQ, MGCQ, no person can go out of this house unnecessarily. No? During that time, some people, kay dili man di ay, naman tayo, balaod nga mag-stay at home ta, 
So, karon ang nahitabo, guys, uh, we are now have a good times in our family. The good thing of quarantine is that we have a lot of time in cleaning our, ha our home, no? Ang mga alikabok na pasan ng mga baga, ano, kakuan na yung town, no? Nata na natay time na nag-arrange sa tong closet, taga na katagay pang luto, no? na nabukta sa quarantine. Even karon uso kayo ang sige pananom o kaning kuan bulak unya sige pangitag mga kaang actually those are the good thing happened in the quarantine but guys uh, not all are given not everyone is enjoying things that we call as family life someone out there are quarantine no kaya gani ang akong ako ang atong title is quarantine or quarantine because quarantine na quarantine na gali ka na pay pandemic na nay virus but then there are also people experiencing quarantine ah uh, experiencing abuses that is why uh, what our quarantine and quarantine meaning to say parang na dubli ang iyang experiences of abuse ah uh, uh, na dubli ang iyang hangkuan ba ang iyang experiences nga dili siya kagawas kay na na tungod sa iyang experience okay so we have basically guys uh, uh, mo na siya ang broad sa ato ang quarantine. Okay. So we have here how quarantine affect the gender-based violence. Nga naman, ang sabi tao, no? Yung sa, yun sa pag-apekto ang, ang gender-based violence. So as we said, lockdown, stay at home, and physical distancing be sure to contain the spread of virus is an opportunity to harm other wives because no one is listening. Okay. So that is why maka-apekto siya because... Um, Dili man makagawas, no? So, kung nanaka sa sulod, uh, nabit siya opportunity nga iyahang ma, uh, iyahang ma, ma inflict o harm ang iyahang wife or iyang partner. Okay? Stressor including economic uncertainty, job losses, and overcrowded settings where physical, dis physical distancing is not feasible are likely to increase the perpetration of violence in the home, no? Especially kung wala, wala na yung mga trabaho, no? Ikalit lang cut off wala trabaho, init ang ulo. So most likely, maka-apik to Jude ang um, quarantine sa pagtaas ato ang um, uh, gender-based violence. You know? There are also what we call as limited or access to protect support network. So maglisip na siya, kaya nga naman, during the quarantine days, you know, wala mga, wala, no accessibility. So, kana, diligid kagawas ang mga biktima. You know? Maglisip o network. Confinement can result in Increase consumption of alcohol and other substances, which is associated with perpetration of violence. Before nagkaroon ng alcohol ban sa alcohol, so most likely na as alcohol consumption kaya ngano man naramad dito, mas stress out mang kasa quarantine, liman ka unara kasa balay, yung kita off lang. Although we are also affected with that, but then kita okay raman ta kay. Wala may mo abuso. Pero katong mga family, katong mga babae na nakafeel o mga abuse, so dili sila ka-out. Ka okay? So we have here, guys, I'm gonna show you data of uh, gender-based violence before and during pandemic. So, so worldwide, actually, in global arena, particularly in China, no? so China magiging originate si novel virus. The number of domestic violence cases reported sa ilang local February February pa lang, nag-increase na sila of 30% global. Okay? So, I have here also another cited literature, guys, The Guardian. Accordingly, calamitous of domestic violence set to soar by 20% during global lockdown. No? And have here also, uh, before before the pandemic, 40%, less than 40% of women experienced violence reported those crimes sought to help. 40% no? less than 40%. Since the lockdown, this is in global, ha, 30% of domestic violence reported nag-increase na siya sa Singapore. Sa Kaipros, nag-increase siya of 30%. Sa France, nag-increase siya of 30%. Sa Argentina, nag-increase po siya of 25%. Actually, mo nang naitabo. Okay? So what about now? I'm gonna ask the status of gender-based violence before and during the pandemic. Sa Philippines, unsa kaya sa atong pamino, guys? So, I have here a question. Unsa kaya, uh, pwede ba mong tanas sa ang audience, no, sa ang online viewers, sa ilang perception on the status of gender violence during lockdown? 
pwede mo mo ano uh, mag mga yung answer you can type one if you think it is increasing and you can type two if you if you feel it is decreasing uh, pwede na to makuan makuha ang statistical statistical data kung unsa kaya sa atong viewers lang ha sa atong viewers what would you think the status of gender based violence during the lockdown nag increase ba siya one or nag decrease two can you type guys before ta mo go further with our discussion in our uh, philippine settings kay importante man siya kay nang sa pilipinas no bitaw no sa bitaw ato ang uh, status karon diri sa mati or sa Pilipinas, yung taas ba kaya? Or bigamay ang ato ang data of gender-based violence. Sige daw, can I hear? Kung uh, saan pinakadaghan nga to bag? One, two. So, na yung mga ano diri ah. One, two. Ano? Before tamo go further, sige daw. Uh, one, so increasing. You, you feel uh, gender-based violence, violence is increasing. Okay, so, ato to bagon. Based sa statistical data nga ako ang nakita, no? ako ang nakuha in the Philippine settings. Okay, guys, here are the gender-based violence before the pandemic. No, ato sang i-picture out ang gender-based violence before the pandemic. So, what are those gender-based violence? This is uh, came from the Philippine Statistics Office and the PNP and the DSWD, published last February 2020. So, we have here, guys, Gender-based violence. So, unsa ang mga kadalasan gender-based violence before the pandemic? We have rape, physical abuse, trafficking, and sexual exploited. So, we have here 2019 to 2018. So, if you notice, wala pa ang pandemic sa 2019, may taas na siya. Compare rape, 2,162. Compare na to sa 2018, which is 1,656. Na siya'y increased na 30.6%. Of the physical abuse, we have 16,251 sa 19, 2019, and we have also 14,166 sa 2018. Again, nag-increase siya. Kung ato siyang tanaw ni sum up, nag-increase siya. Nag-increase ang gender-based violence before the pandemic. Pero what about the BAUSI? Huwag man dirigibanggit nila. Actually, ang ilahang ginapublish kinilang siya. Pero naku'y naku'y ang data. Again, uh, kung atong isum up ang gender-based violence of the four na gibanggit na based violence, yung taas ang iyahang in, uh, na siya increase. Before the pandemic na increase ang GBV. Okay? So, here now guys, the statistical data of BAUSIG before the pandemic. So actually wala wala sila wala na ko nakuha ang exact uh, number of 2019. What I've here is 2006 data of 2016, 2017 and 2018. And if we're going to notice guys, ang nakadindot sa Bausi karon, kung atong itan-awon ang arrow, nag-markdown siya kasi 2016 32,000 niya, pag 17 25,000 niya, 2018 18,000. So kung atong i it draw ang picture niya, statistical data, ning kuan siya nag, nagamay, na, ning, ning, dec uh, ning decrease ang ato ang cases of BAUSI. I think maybe because we are effective in our effort sa ato ang pag pagsulod sa community, uh, pagtaas na to sa ato ang uh, raising awareness. Okay? So now, again, uh, wala, na, wala ko kakuha sa data. Wala tayo data, exact data on 2019. But we have here, uh, uh, cited literature you know, that the data in 2019 such as illegal recruitment, other cases such as battered, economically abused, I think there is a belong, uh, neglected or abandoned by husband and distressed overseas or Filipino workers serve as field in the offices or sexual abuse, women affected by armed conflict and physical abuse, abuse or maltreated, battered, posted, declines. So, giisa na nila nga information, wala sila nagatag ng specific. So, 2019, nag-decline siya. Okay? Now, here comes another statistical data of BAUSI on the onset of pandemic. Katong pag-start sa pandemic, uh, we started January to 15. So, specifically, BAUSI lang siya, no? So, January, guys, to March 49, natali ang PNP 
Ano ah, sila na? Tali na 7,313 cases of BOSI. Pag-abot na to sa March 15, March 15 to May, May 31, 2020, ninggamay siya. Actually, I think mo ni siya ang pasugod na po sa to ang lockdown. Okay, sa lockdown. No? So, if we're going to look at the statistical data, pag-start karon sa pandemic, sa onset niya, wala pa nag-start ang lockdown, naghinahinay na siya o kagamay, nag-increasing na siya into 45% pag-start sa pandemic. Uh, naghinay ang mga reporting sa BAUSI. Okay? So, yan. So, we have ARO, guys, na nag-increase karon ang problema ng BAUSI. Again, so, so BAUSI is uh, composed of uh, violence against women and violence against children. So, kini specifically sa children, women lang ni siya. So, yan, i-picture lang nato, i-show lang nato na naa siya remarkable increase. Nag-down ang iyahang trajectory. Before community quarantine and during the quarantine na, itong nagkasubot na taong lockdown. Here also, guys, the data of violence against children, nagkababa po siya, no? ang iyahang data, nag-markdown. Okay, here now the comparison of data from 2019 and 2020. No? Ang data nga, ako ang nakuha lang yun is from March. So we have here uh, gender-based violence such as rape and, uh, and uh, RE9262. So sa March 15 to May 31, tanawa na ito pa ron, ang iyahang down, nagtali siya o uh, last year, 2000. 18 ka cases ang rate pero karon sa lockdown nag nakatali lang sila og 809 sa Bausi po na po 3621 ya nakatali lang sila og 1752 so sa ang hita po nagbaba siya ang rate nagbaba nagbaba ang reporting isa baba og 40% nya nagbaba pud og 52% ang kaso sa domestic violence those are our data and we have here guys again uh, uh, some uh, literature that during the pandemic, during the pandemic, data shows that the number of cases of gender violence, abuse, and violence reported to authorities declining ningamay during the first month and the half of the coronavirus lockdown measures. Okay, so yon nagdecline siya during nasa pandemic. So, sa lockdown, ang ano niya ang nahita po sa lockdown, there are only 804 uh, incident of gender-based violence. Again, this data is coming from or quoted, uh, coming from the PNP and quoted by the Philippine Commission on Women. So, sa lockdown na niya, guys. So, again, kung atong tanawon, nag-mark down, lockdown from March. Kung tanawon po nato, di aris ato ang table. We have here 804, ang pinakadaghan ang nga cases sa Central Visayas. Again, nag-markdown, gihapon siya. Okay, now, here comes the new normal, no? Actually, new normal. New normal naman ta. Kung new normal, nanatay physical distancing, wear of facial, wear of face mask, no? So, kay giluag-luagan naman ang restriction na to karoon sa quarantine, nanatay ginatawag niya new normal. And this is now the cases that talad, uh, last June 4, 2020, nakatali ang PNPO. Sorry. Nakatali ang PNP of 3,600 cases, of which 1,945 is women and 1,745 cases of children. So, nagkaanam na siya ang kataas. Pagbalik sa new normal, nagkataas na po ang cases, reported cases ng gender-based violence. Okay. Now, okay, nga naman di ay initabo during the lockdown or the measure, what should we do now? Okay, so we have here some recommendation, guys. What should we do now? So I think uh, we are going to proceed still our advocacy in raising awareness. Huh? Kini, kini nga ito ang ginahimu karon webinar, no? kasi nga, magliso naman ang physical distancing because again, this is new normal. No? So ours is to raise, raise awareness on gender-based uh, violence, and etc. No? We also change... Well, I think we need also to change gender norms. No? Katong atong dimension kagayin na nga. Katong atong mga belief na growth na atong mga belief nga uh, makapekto sa to akaroon. Kinahala na to na siya usbon. Ito ang perception between the sex and gender 
And we have empowering. No? I think kung may mga tanang, anong ningamay kaya ma'am ang bausi? I think because maybe na-empowered na po ang mga babae. Daghan na ang nag-report. Nga. Daghan na ang nag-report sa PNP nga. Those are cases violent, violence against women ito siya. Uh, it might maybe uh, uh, effective ang ato ang gihimo nga raising awareness. And of course, this is through education. Okay. Now, how to address gender-based violence in educational institutions. So we have, we have here some recommendation. It cre creates and develop a gender-aware counseling system that gives effective support to victim or survivor of GBV by training relevant staff. Kaya kinahalan mo na ito ni siya address just in case nga na atay mga ma-encounter na gender-based violence within our environment. Support and coordinate existing, existing government and civil society initiatives from different sectors working to enact laws and improve the existing laws on gender-based violence and education. Involve local communities and parents through parent-teacher association to change attitude and behavior on societal level. So kung diari, kung na natin mga parent-teacher orientation sa ginikanan, siguro ato i-appeal to, di-add to, i-inculcate na pagbalik na lahi ng sex of gender kay magkaroon ta og gender characterization no? next is to support group education outside school combined with community mobilization this intervention usually provide training on topics like masculinity gender equality gender based violence to adolescents who in turn mobilize through different community events okay? so muna siya amo ang mga natag na mga recommendation how to address gender-based violence sa mga educational institution. Next, of course, recommendations atong government. No? Is one is strengthen the first response system to include BAO. No? Kasi ang hitabo sa lockdown, wala po yung support system. No? Nawala po ang tawag ani, support network sa BAO. So, most likely, kung ikaw to ang naabuso ng babae, Asa maka mo report niya na ba? So wala. So I think uh, we need to strengthen the first response system ng BAO sa government. I think sa PNP or the ALG. Okay? And we have uh, also strengthened, we need also to strengthen our virtual support, a social support net network. No? Sa ano ba? Sa, sa man atong gihimo na na part para makatabang ta, baya, uh, virtual. Okay? Ini, kani nga tanggihin mong engagement, is, it is actually uh, one of the support para natay network with our, para, paan ba, mudagan ning kuan ang ato ang talks about gender-based violence. So, include also guys sa uh, bow in program of the IETF. So dapat, uh, if, we, if we are uh, God advocates, niya, kung mag-decision ang IETF like how, yun sa nila pag come up with their confirmation ng mga quarantine, I think they also need to attend to attend the needs of women or or, or victim of bausi so dapat napud sila ing anak na mga plan kasi may tabo magud karon nakapokus lagi tanan sa virus so, so on pag suppress pero wala na, nakita ni siya nga problema which is sobra pa ni more than pa ni sa kaning pandemic nga na experience ng isang uh, victim ng violence okay so what are the gv the gender based violence hotlines no, na yung mga hotlines na guys na nag-create kasi nga, question one time I think uh, sa Leather Rontiveros nga nung nagkagamay sa lockdown ang, ang cases it might na ipagkukulang government so karon na yung mga hotlines na ginahimo and we have um, the, H, the, the, the CHR launches online reporting portal for gender-based violence during lockdown so na yung mga, yung mga initiative ang atong government na na sila ginatawag na i-report sa gender ombud Yan. Next is, ito, ang ato ang dopo guys, ano po sila yung ano sa Facebook, ano, na sila yung dopo, WCD, i-reklamo. I, I think uh, this was launched last uh, first week ata ng September. So kung imo na siyang i-click, may mga problema na ma-encounter ma na ito, pwede tamo, anhi diri sa ilang Facebook, ano, na na sila, where are you located, umuha niya ato makita pag i-click na ito na siya nga page. Now sa... We have here also the, the hotlines, guys, hotlines. So, ayun, paki-note kasi in times kung natay uh, mga estudyante silingan ba or makita ang nai mga gipang uh, na gender violence, either bausi or or 
sexual harassment. So na tayong mga hotlines diari sa gika ni siya sa toang grupo, Dabao, Proven Dabao Oriental Provincial Police Office. Yan. And of course, uh, we have here guys sa uh, DOCST, we, we also initiated Dabao Oriental COVID-19 Psychological First Aid. No, It is a psychological first aid uh, pamaagi nga makatabang ang institusyon Apil na diari ang BAUSI, kung may mga experiences of BAUSI, pwede ta diri modulog sa, sa tate. It is provided by our Human Resource Management Office. no? So, sa DeepEd, guys, so kung naan tayo maging anin na initiative po sa DeepEd, dapat na po tayo hotlines to help uh, people na maka-experience of gender-based violence. This is a call for advocacy sa mga uh, God advocates na na po tayo dapat ng mga hotlines na magtabang sa ila. Next guys, uh, I have I want to leave this kung mahirap labanan ang pandemyang lantad tulad ng COVID-19, higit na mahirap labanan ang pandemyang nakapubli tulad ng karahasan laban sa kababaihan. That is why kami nag-advocate si Bini Ani kay ano man lisod mo samot nang kalisod. Again, that is why we have quarantine or quarantine those women who are abused nakapubli sa karahasan ng kababaihan. Okay? I think that's all about my talks. Uh, I, I, I end this that uh, I'm only uh, giving an updates of gender-based violence at, as of the statistical data. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for listening, Mamarns. Ayan. Thank you, din, Doc, Doc Geraldino. So, maudi ay thought on title quarantine or quarantine. So, ayan. So very concise ka ay on presentation ni Doc Geraldine no na ajud dito tanan. And update jud siya. Medyo nakakuan yun tanan. Ay, na ajud tay unani na day ang kuan sa Pilipinas. Kasi medyo mangkot karon sa lockdown, di ba, Doc? Um natutok tayo sa COVID-19 ba? Medyo ang yes. ubang mga kuan na to. Like for example, nawala, nawala na ang services. Yes. Ayan, so, they like the teenage pregnancy, the violence. Ayan, medyo yes. na, na cover na naman. Yes. Mm. Ayan. Yes, hi, Doc Leo. Ayan. Uh, <laughs> give the floor to Doc Leo for the uh, <laughs> uh, certificate of appreciation. Uh, yes, Doc, na? Okay, okay. Ayan, uh, so, so, Doc Leo. Uh, this is it. Okay, I'll read this one first. Uh, Republic of the Philippines, Department of Education, Region 11, Schools Division of the City of Mati, the Hikan City of Mati, Certificate of Appreciation. This certificate is awarded to Dr. Geraldine H. Sacro in recognition of her meritorious role as speaker during the conduct of the webinar on quarantine or quarantine. Updates on gender-based violence amidst the COVID-19 pandemic in partnership with Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology Gender and Development Center via online platform. Given at the ICT Library Hub, the Hikan City of Mati on September uh, 17, 2020, signed uh, Alona C. Oise to 6, Assistant Schools Division Superintendent Officer in Charge Office of the Schools Division Superintendent. Ma'am, thank you. Ayan, virtual club. <laughs> Ayan, thank you, Sir Lee. Okay. So, uh, yes, Nana mo just Doc Leo during is Doc Leo for closing remarks. And thank you, Doc Geraldine. Okay. Uh, I am actually very grateful for our partnership with the Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology. A gender and Development uh, Center, headed, of course, by our speaker, uh, Dr. Geraldine Himilian Sacro. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, giving your free services, yeah, free services to the Schools Division of the City of Mati, and we are actually very happy for all the assistance you have given to our school, uh, to our schools, and to the whole division of the City of Mati. Uh, we look forward for the last. Uh, webinar series with Professor Mary Lynn, uh, Mary Phil Baoyot, and that would be, I think, on psychosocial. I, I no, psycho, I, I think it has something to do with um, 
uh, developed some psychosocial or it's an intervention which basically related as well to the human development, especially for those who have been stressed during this pandemic uh, period. No? So uh, again, thank you to our SDS. Uh, for the support, Mama Lona, and happy birthday as well to our chief, Sir Jurli Oy, to our chief for the CID, si Ma'am Gina Flores, to our administrative officer, of course, si Sir uh, Arnold. Thank you for allowing your uh, staff to join us this morning. And uh, again, thank you to the Dr. Edito Bisomili, the OIC President of Davao Oriental State College of Science and Technology, to Dr. Sacro, Professor Bauyot, and Jonel Villegas. Marami pong salamat for uh, helping us in this endeavor of ensuring that our teachers and our non-teaching uh, personnel will be able to be updated as well with what's going on with uh, the gender-based violence and how we, we are going to combat this and we will as well continue advocating the, the rights of every individuals. Again, uh, marami pong salamat at sa susunod po nating webinar series, magandang umaga po. Ayan, thank you, Doc Clay, for the closing remarks and for this wrap up, um, wrap up our morning. And see you for our last badok, no? Last as uh, God session. Ayan, uh, so, so mental health, uh, COVID and mental health naman tayo. So interesting din po yan. So we will see you guys for our last and fourth session sa ato ang Gender and Development Webinar Series. So keep safe everyone and bye! Thank you!